Hey there, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the channel. So we got a bit of a problem that we need to fix. There's the house, nice and tan. There's the brand new shed, just made a video of that, nice and tan. And here is the barn, shops right back here by the way, which is multiple different colors. And that doesn't fly around here. So today I'm gonna to take you step by step, everything you need to know to repaint a metal building like this, whether it's a barn or a commercial style metal building. What we have to do today, replace this door before we had gutters on there. Rain would splash on the ground right there and it rotted out the bottom of that door. So we're gonna replace that. And then there are some rust spots on here that we're gonna wire brush down. And then we're gonna wash the whole thing with the Greenworks Outdoor Power Tools Power Washer. Greenworks is a sponsor of today's video, more on that later. And then we'll use some rust inhibiting primer to go over those rust spots that we wire brushed. Then we'll follow everything up with Sherwin-Williams Super Paint, which is an exterior grade paint. We got brown to match the gutters and the trim of the house that we'll do the trim with. And then we got the tan to match the house and the shed and everything will look copacetic on the property. Getting the old man door out wasn't a huge deal. Besides, there was like three screws and then nails. Who uses nails in a doorway? But either way, there were some impressively long Phillips head screws in this guy as well. I basically destroyed the thing, so I really, really hope that I got the proper size door frame, which I did. Got the other door out. Why would anyone use nails for a door? It's beyond me. Thankfully the door frame was square, obviously well built, so I didn't have to do much shimming to get everything square in the frame so that the door would open and close correctly. And I used screws, not nails, so this should come out a little bit easier if I do ever have to replace this door again. I did use some exterior grade caulk on the outside just to make sure the J channel of the metal, I guess that's what that's called, didn't have any openings for water to seep in and damage my new door. Now that we had the door repair done, it was time to get everything prepared for actually cleaning the barn. As you can see, the color difference there is atrocious, but the brown that's closest to us and the gutters are the same color, and that is going to be the color of all of the trim. So we're taking the gutter off so I don't have to put any paint on that, although you certainly could paint your metal gutters or aluminum gutters if you needed to. Then we're moving on to wire brushing the bottom of the metal, and this is really the only spot that I did have any rust uh, here and then maybe about eight foot up in the air by the garage door on the front of the barn only this portion there was a little bit of rust again at the seam. When I picked up the paint, I asked the recommendations of the gentleman at Sherwin-Williams what I should use to clean the barn. They said TSP or Simple Green, and this is a house and siding cleaner, which I actually got at Sherwin-Williams store. And I'm using my Greenworks Outdoor Power Tools Power Washer, and this actually has a soap dispenser built into it. The only thing you need to be aware of is there is no way to stop that soap dispense. So you don't want to wash down the whole barn because you don't want that soap to dry on there. So you want to spray down and keep your portion wet as you're working. So only put in enough soap to do the side that you're working on. And then when the soap is out, you can switch to a different nozzle, which in my case, I'm using the turbo nozzle, which comes with the Greenworks power washer, which is awesome to wash down all of the barn and it worked fantastic. You can see right here, it is stripping off that dirt like nobody's business. As mentioned, this video has been brought to us by Greenworks Outdoor Power Tools, whose 2300 PSI electric pressure washer I am using today to clean off this barn. It comes with all the different soap dispenser nozzles that you will need, including a turbo nozzle, which depending where you look is a $25 to $75 item. Big thanks to Greenworks for sponsoring this video and providing an excellent product. My favorite feature would be the large wheels, which allow me to roll over and through bumps with ease. Check out Greenworks Power Washer, link in the description below. So at this point, we are ready to start applying some paint. As you can see behind me, I did start applying some of this Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer on here. This is for heavy rust areas, which we didn't actually have any heavy rust. 
and I already wire brushed it all off, but I wanted to use this for a best result overall. So I'm going to go over all the spots in the front and on the bottom of the panels where I did wire brush with this. And if I have enough, I'm also going to go over all of the screw heads on here because I think that's going to be the suspect area that might bleed a little bit in the future. As mentioned earlier, we are using Sherwin-Williams Super Paint for all of the trim and the siding of this barn. And here I am charging up my Graco TC Pro with the custom match dark chocolate brown, which is going to be the trim on the barn, which matches the house and looks beautiful in contrast to the tan. Just making sure I get rid of any of the air bubbles in the PPS system of the TC Pro and we are ready to go. We are ready for some trim paint. I got my Graco TC Pro right here. This is a cordless airless sprayer and it is fantastic for stuff like this. For the first time ever, I have changed the orientation on this gun to a vertical spray pattern. Usually I have horizontal so I can work in larger swipes up and down, but we're gonna be up on a ladder here and I wanna make sure I have plenty of control over a short area. So we're gonna go vertical. Here you can actually see how I am using a scrap piece of, this is roofing actually, to shield against overspray going into the barn. And if you get really good, you can actually use this in some aspects instead of masking things off, but I'm not quite there yet. So I'm gonna use this where I can, but in other areas we are gonna mask off the trim once it is dried so we can spray the siding with the tan color. And as I've mentioned many times in my videos in the past, spray or don't even do it at all because this is the only way God intended paint to be put on objects. Okay, it is time to bring out the big guns and apply a lot of paint. I got seven gallons, again, of Sherwin-Williams Super Paint, and I'm going to be using my Graco Pro X17 to apply. I really don't think that a brush or a roller is the way to go on metal. If you have a project like this, I would highly recommend renting or borrowing an airless sprayer like this. You can rent these things, so check with your local home centers, rental centers, and, and even paint stores and see what you can do. Again, I'm going to be using a shorter wand. Typically, this is the one I use so that I have a wide range of reach, but I wanna make sure that as I get further away, I'm not moving this further and closer to the wall, which will mess up my spray pattern. And I'm going to be using a 515 tip, which if I'm looking right, it's going to give me a 10 inch fan pattern when I'm about a foot away, which is what I'm after. To set up our Graco Pro X17, we first want to mix up our paint and then insert the siphon nozzle of the machine into, in this case, our five gallon bucket of paint, making sure that our primer hose does not get buried in there because it will just make a disaster. Flip the selector over to allow the pump to be primed. And when you get paint flowing out of the primer hose, Flip the handle to charge your paint hose. Now you are pretty much ready to go, except for in my case there is water in here from the last time I used the paint sprayer. And this allows you to pump all of the paint out of the hose when you're done. You fill it with water. So this time I need to make sure that the water is out of there and I have my correct color of paint ready to go. Once you have a nice fan pattern coming out of there, steady with paint, you are ready to rock and by golly, does paint go on fast when you are spraying with this thing. I painted this entire outside of the barn in about four hours and that was setting up and taping everything off as well. What a difference we're seeing here. I have this angle right here so we can actually see the color of the house and the color of the barn being changed and how wonderful a paint job match the guys at Sherwin-Williams did. And did I mention before, painting goes so fast with this Graco Pro X17, it is a good time. I hate painting, but I do like spraying, and by George, what a difference you're seeing right there in the transformation of this barn. 
Like I mentioned before, I am not super good with my paint shield method, so I am going to be taping off the trim portion, which we already painted brown, with some masking tape and some paper. The only masking tape I use nowadays is Scott's from 3M Sharp Edges. I've tried many other things in the past, and this is by far and away, hands down, the best tape I've ever used for making sure you get a nice crispy line. No sponsor. Just awesome stuff that I want you guys to use. Here you can see a huge color transformation. We have the reddish brown of the trim before on the barn. You can see the chocolate brown at the top and then the tan which is going to be the final color of all the siding. And I'm leaving those corner posts tan because that is the way the house is. So we have the chocolate trim on the top and on the peak and the gutters of the barn and then we have the tan siding everywhere else. Now, if this picture doesn't get the warm fuzzies going on inside of you like it does me, I don't know what to say. A barn being totally changed, costing only $300 to totally transform the look of a property with the blue sky and clouds flowing overhead, that is just fantastic. couple of recommendations. The first would be pull your masking up immediately after you're done painting as long as you have good coverage. On this side you can see I peeled a little bit of the paint up. That's because we had a gust come over as soon as I was done spraying this and I wasn't able to get the masking off for a few hours. On the other side of the barn we got perfectly crispy clean lines because I pulled the masking off before the paint was dry. The second would be don't use your new key apparel threads to paint in. It's never a good idea. Link for this stuff in the description below if you want some awesome apparel. Check this out. House, barn, shed. All matchy matchy makes me happy inside. I hope it makes you happy inside because boy oh boy does that look so much better than it did before. Yes, a DIYer can paint a metal barn like a pro. You gotta say the paint was fantastic. Again, I used Sherwin-Williams Super Paint, which is an exterior grade waterborne paint and primer in one. It covered fantastic as you saw when we were covering the dark brown over there and it smoothed out wonderfully as I'll show you in a couple of close-up pictures. We'll see how it is durability wise over time. I'm sure there is a several day to maybe a couple week a month cure time before that gets super super hard and durable but we will see. I do got the gutter on the other side and it looks wonderful. We are ready for some more rain which is coming. We got a little bit of sun out here to get this outro shot. It poured last night didn't see any ill effects on the paint. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button as it helps us out and gets this video in front of more eyes. Big thanks to Greenworks for sponsoring this video and of course to Key for outfitting us in some hardworking threads all the time. Links to both of them in the description below. I'm DIY Tyler and you guys have a good one.